Welcome to Believer's Channel. I'm Pastor Russ, and I've got a great program for you today. And before we get into it, I'd like to remind you that there's a thumbs up at the bottom, and there's a little red button for subscribing, and there is a donate button if God moves your heart to donate. You can hit that, it says PayPal. So I, uh, if you want to bless me, give me that thumbs up, because it's very important. Um, as to how it registers with uh, YouTube and so on. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Satan being chained in hell. Something we all look forward to. And uh, there's events that come up to that. And it's, it's important to know the background of these events before we get into how he gets chained and why he gets chained and so on. Uh, the big event in the, in the very beginning was Jesus telling his disciples uh, that there was going to come a time when Israel would be destroyed, that the temple would be wiped out, not one stone would be left on top of the other. Uh, the Romans even threw salt down and raked it into the ground so nothing would grow. And then all the Jews would be dispersed throughout the world. There wouldn't be a Jewish nation anymore. So this had to be stuff devastating for them to hear. But it was going to happen. Jesus was crucified. In AD 70, the city was destroyed. Around, I think he was crucified in AD 33, somewhere in that area. And just a, a matter of uh, 30 years later, that prophecy that he gave, came true. Now he also said that before he comes again he will bring the Jews back to Israel. And you know what the odds of that are? There has never ever been a society or a nation that's been totally destroyed and wiped out and dispersed and ever come back to the same spot and start over again. It's never happened. And what even makes it that much worse is they, their language. They came back with the same language, something that you, you've never seen by anybody. Once they're dispersed, they usually lose their language. The Jews did not lose their language. So that was the, the big event, uh, Israel being destroyed. And now we've got to look forward to the Jews coming back. So we go fast forward ahead to May 15th, 1948, when uh, Israel was declared a nation. The Bible said it would happen in one day. There was pastors that said they don't see how it could possibly ever happen, but it did. Jesus brought the Jews back into Israel, and they're still coming back to be a nation a nation of godly people. Now, once all the Jews are back, there's going to be a time of great tribulation. Now, people say we have tribulation. Tribulation in our lives every day, and we do. Uh, everybody does. Churches, countries, people, everybody has tribulation in their life. But this is listed as the great tribulation Nothing like it. There's nothing like it ever. It will be the greatest tribulation ever in, in the world that the world has ever seen. And at the end of that tribulation is when evil is destroyed. Now, just before the tribulation, there's going to be a rapture. Because the church has to leave. And they will go to heaven. All believers will go to heaven. While this great tribulation is going on. God has never left anybody in any kind of tribulation. Uh, Noah and the ark, same thing. He took, them, he took them out. Took them above what was going to happen. This great tribulation will be so bad 
that if Jesus didn't come back with the saints, there wouldn't be nothing left. Satan is out to kill everybody and everything. He's out to rule the world. He'll leave a remnant just to bow down to him. God puts an end to it. He comes back with his saints. He takes Satan and throws him into hell and chains him up. And a thousand years of reign under Jesus Christ. He brings the city down from heaven, places it in Jerusalem, and he rules from there. He rules the world from there. And during that thousand years, he does it for a thousand years. During that thousand years, many people are born. The earth repopulates. Now, they have fleshly bodies, flesh and blood. So the sin on those bodies has never went away. The temptation of the body itself, the sin nature, is still there. So at the end of a thousand years, Satan is released to do all the terrible things he can think of and take as many with him as he can. Because Jesus has to give you a choice. It's always a choice. It's always about choosing right from wrong. In your life every day you have uh, things that you have to make up your mind on. Do I want to do this? It's wrong. Over here, something's right if I don't do it. Uh, many decisions every day by everybody, countries, individuals, the works, all have to make decisions as to whether something's right or wrong. When you choose right, God blesses you. So he releases Satan from hell to do all the terrible things he can think of. And God destroys all evil. I mean, during that time, Satan was resurrecting the armies and the war machinery to try to come after God and kill him. But the bottom line is he loses. And that's when all evil is taken from the earth. All evil. All temptation will be taken from the earth. Think about it. I want you to think about this. In your life right now, you can avoid what's coming. Noah and his family, by accepting God, avoided what was coming. He took them above it. And that's what he's going to do with the saints. He's going to take us above it into heaven. And then come back with us to destroy evil. When all that's over, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And it's going to be a utopia. So make the decision today to not have to go through all that terrible stuff by just accepting Jesus. It's a free gift. That's what he went on the cross for, to give you this free gift. It's a free gift of love, a free gift of redemption, a free gift of uh, of forgiveness. All you have to do is repeat after me and mean it with your heart. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner. And I know Jesus died for me. I know his blood will wash me clean. So, Father God, I'm asking you right now, please forgive me for all my sins. Wash me clean that I'd be white as snow and be able to stand before you and not feel shame. Stand before you and have you see Jesus and not me. The blood of him on me instead of my sin. I ask you to forgive me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, you don't have to worry about any tribulation. May God bless you. May he keep you, may his face shine upon you, and may his residence be with you, always. May God bless you in everything that you do. Amen.